Hello and welcome to Rock and Roll, where as always we'll be looking to dominate the breakdowns. Robert Madoy here, flanked by David Mutaka and Philip Kiboijana. So David, I gather you're the blind side flank, are you? Yes, I am. I uh, always like to keep it quiet, just to carry the ball out, to do the hard work. And Philip, you're ready to thrive in open play? Uh, <laughs> not that I have a choice, <laughs> but I will be there today. Okay. This, by the flankers, is what's coming up on the show. The graveyard is bracing itself for a rare high-profile match, but does Impi still have what it takes to play The Undertaker? It's a time of fasts as the Uganda Super Series makes a beeline for the try box. But will it be able to cross the white chalk? We talk to local rugby boss Andrew Owo. And we have a comprehensive look at the players who define the season that's just ended. We start off the show with a club that's longing for its illustrious past. Impis is the club I'm talking about. Now, the Makere based side will today be hosting Saddling Mongas in a winner takes all league playoff match. We've been talking to Impis acting chairman Bill Lutalo about the club's past and future. Impis Rugby Club was established in 1989. It's one of the oldest clubs in Uganda. And it's also one of only the only one of three that has taken the league. Um, the others being Heathens and Cobbs, of course. Unfortunately, the last time we took the league was in 1996. When the game grew, we did not grow at the same pace. Uh, other teams got professional, they got sponsors. And while we had a sponsor for a while, um, that went south recently. We, we don't have that anymore. So it's, it's kind of difficult for us to compete with guys who are playing at a semi-professional level. We had to um, use Uganda Cup to qualify for this, which you know was a totally different angle from what it has been. Um, had we stayed in the old structure, we'd still be in the main league right now. But that, that's in the past. We accepted that and we're working towards getting back up there. It's been a breeze in terms of the games have been easy because our talent is definitely way ahead of our competitors in the championship. Um, it has also been kind of a wake-up call. We, I think we took our, our position in, in the top flight uh, for granted, but when we come back, we are, we're, we're coming back to stay. Uh, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a threat. There, there, are, there are a couple of guys there that have played in the big leagues for a while, and, and yes, they've they have had stronger opposition in, in the past concluded league. So I would imagine they, um, they're probably going to put up a good fight. But at the end of the day, I see us coming up on top. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Bill Lutalo there. Now, David, you are part of uh, Impis back in the days. Uh, yes. What made them tick? Um, I think what made them tick uh, at the time I was there was uh, the spirit of... Uh, we used to call it brotherhood, yeah. the, the Shaka spirit and uh, the Zulu spirit. So everyone played for each other. Everyone was happy to play. Every student that came to the university opted to play for Impis. Uh, of course, that later changed as clubs started taking some of the players. Yeah. So you find people like Alan Musoke never played for Impis. Um, and the players post that the kimonos these days don't play for Impis. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think the fact that the players wanted to play for Impis and had a proud culture was, was really the big thing for, for MPs at the time. Okay. Now, uh, do you think they, they, they needed to have come up with another model, you know, to survive since uh, the big clubs were approaching the players who are at the university? Uh, definitely. I think they had to rethink that uh, in terms of uh, the, the structures around uh, the sports council and, and how they fund it. What they've done well is really find funding. Yeah. Because in the times we played, we used to sing for money. Yeah. You'd sing for money, then go train, then play. <laughs> <laughs> right now, <laughs> I mean, Impis gets funding, they have sponsors, the university gives them the bus, we'd have to hire taxis. So uh, there's something around the spirit and the players that actually play for the club that has gone away that, that they've struggled to find. And yet they have some talented players, some really, really talented players still in that team. Okay. Yeah. 
And uh, Philip, do you think the club's best days are ahead of it? I, I honestly want to think they are. With much as they are struggling, we've seen Impis produce players who are turning up for the National Sevens team. Yeah, so you mean you look at uh, Keith Seruyange there, you look at a player like uh, Augustine Kaliesubula, these are very talented players. And I think, like David says, yeah. with the motivation they are getting nowadays, the sponsorship coming in, in peace, it's, if it continues on the path it's on, will be a club destined for greatness again. Okay. Now, I know there has been, you know, this uh, cloud of doubt, you know, hovering above this, the playoff match, which, uh, uh, they are, they are, which is supposed to, to take place today. They're supposed mm -hmm. to take on Mongas, uh, uh, if it does take place. And mm -hmm. uh, from the looks of it, it looks like it's a big if. <laughs> but if it does take place, do you see them getting one up on Mongas? It's a one-off playoff match at the graveyard. Um, I think they will struggle. The Mongas have had better preparation. Impis has been off for about three weeks. If the Mongas do show up and we know them in their gritty style, uh, the, the Impis pitch favors, favors the Mongas. Uh, but if the Mongas have been half-hearted as they have and then they show up, I think they might lose. So in my mind, it too early to call it, but I think the home advantage with Impis, considering the circumstances under which Mongas find themselves now. Okay. And uh, Philip, the Mongas have been making all sorts of noises. We know mm -hmm. that their coach, uh, Robert Powell, is not going to be mm -hmm. uh, at the fringes at the touchline because he's in Abidjan on holiday. And uh, Ham Osando, uh, the consultant, is been uh, featuring intermittently you know, for the club. <laughs> yeah. How do you see them uh, uh, jumping this hurdle before them? Uh, I'd say really, even minus these two. I mean, when Mongas beat uh, Heathens, uh, Paul was was away on work yeah. that day. They had harm, yeah. but you can see it's is they they've structured in a way that even if the coach misses a game, they have that game plan to go with. They've learned a lot from them, though. I think the biggest struggle and challenge there, like David mentioned, is Impis is going to have the home advantage in that game, which is a big deciding factor. Okay. Let's move on now because the maiden edition of the Uganda Super Series is about to be offloaded from the scrum. The four-team tournament has been penciled in to kick off on March 15. We've been to find out whether the tournament is of outstanding merit. It's a new competition we have uh, brought into Uganda. We are going to allow the clubs to form franchises, so it's, it's no longer the individual clubs participating. They will combine with another club they feel is strong enough to work with them and form a franchise team. Um, there will be four, four franchises at the beginning um, and for this inaugural area we are going to kind of base them in Chadondo Rugby Club and Kampala Rugby Club. So each of those will produce two franchises of, of their choice. Um, at the moment, we have come up with four names, uh, mainly the physical features in Uganda, the Mabira, uh, Bumindi, uh, Kidepo, and Mackenshots. So ideally, they will pick up one of those four names. Uh, there should be a chairperson of this the franchise, someone who is kind of leading them. Um, there should be a secretary, a treasurer. Um, there, there should be a team manager. There should be a head coach, they should have an assistant coach, they should have a strength and conditioning coach, and that's a position that most clubs are lacking, and that's why we want to bring it at this stage, so that, you know, finding four strength and conditioning coaches is a bit easier than finding 16 of them. So then we build the profile, and we begin to see the use of a strength and conditioning coach. We will support that process because we have a level two educator in Uganda which uh, is, we're going to use him as a resource to help these strength and conditioning coaches through the super series. Um, then you need a doctor, uh, a team doctor. Again, all these people needed to have done a level one IRB course of some sort so that you know we are sure they know how to handle rugby injuries and, and how to deal with, with it from there. Um, the last position is a physiotherapist. Every, every franchise should have one. Um, the competition will start on the 15th of uh, March. We will play for four weeks uh, with the one round robin. 
and then uh, once after the first round, we shall know who the position. The first and the second will naturally be in a final, and the third and fourth will go for a third place playoff. The, the original proposal is to have a team in each region, a franchise in each region, and that is still our idea. However, you know when you start something new, you have to start with, the, with people who are familiar with the concept. So we are starting there. The next year we hope to grow it to six franchises and we will have one from the north and one from the east. Uh, we also realize that this year those two regions are not financially strong enough to handle the kind of travel that will be involved and the kind of uh, level of participation that will, will be required. But the beauty of it is that they have one and a half years to plan for that. So next year they will have a franchise and they need to start planning how they will come together and how they will play against uh, these other franchises that uh, you could call them Kampala based but more central, central Uganda based. Um, as a reward for the win on this, uh, the clubs, the two clubs that uh, succeed will be uh, given a chance to go and play in the East African Regional Rugby Super Series, which is uh, called the Bamburi Rugby Super Series. So um, again, building rugby from club level into franchise, into regional, regional rugby, which is really our target. Fascinating stuff from the union president. Do you think um, the Uganda Super Series uh, will leave an indelible mark on uh, Ugandan rugby? I see David looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, my opinion <laughs> first. Me <laughs> being I'm, the optimist. I'm being the gentleman. No, I, I think it's, a, it's a definitely a step in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that has been uh, on this, at least the strategy that the chairman spoke about, yeah. is to have continuous rugby, yeah. to develop structures, and to to have to, to have a growth point. So you've played at your club level, then there's a, uh, an, uh, a franchise, yeah. and then the franchise plays international, yeah. and then you go into the, 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 the national team. Yes. So you find that there are levels for players to aspire to, yeah. and that allows growth and allows continuity. Yeah. Yeah. So as to whether we are ready for it is another matter, but I think the best time to start is now. Okay. So as to how much quality the franchise rugby is going to have, yeah. Is, is yet to be seen, yeah. but I think it's a step in the right direction. And, and, and the gymnastics of selecting these four franchise teams, mm -hmm. we know uh, both uh, Chad Dondo and Legends are going to share, uh, they will have two a piece, yeah. but uh, how will these players be selected? The, the, the president did hint at that, but he didn't uh, really. Of course, you can it. see he's really looking at something professional. He yeah. talks of uh, each franchise having a coach, having a team manager team doctor, captain. Yeah. Now, of course, if, if you put the top structure in place, if you put the team management in place, yes. then those will come up with a team. Yeah. And that way, everyone will vie for the best team I can get. Yeah, yeah. Of course, and, and, and the key goal of uh, the Super Series is sort of to spread the game around its tentacles, at least, uh, yes. to ensure that, that rugby, you know, is... Uh, has a presence in all ports of call in the country. But, but do you see this happening? Because uh, for starters, it's, it's going to still be Kampala based, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, I think it's, it's a long term plan. And uh, I know the president has not spoken about it, but there's, there's, there's an initiative called Get Into Rugby and a, a number of plans along the way to say, how does rugby spread out there? How does it get out of these small circles? So eventually, and if you look at places like even South Africa where the franchise has started, yeah. Teams like the Kings right now, uh, Port Elizabeth, didn't have. But now, over about eight years, yeah. it's there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Time to take a breather now. When we return after the break, we'll have a lowdown on the top performers in the recently ended Nile Rugby Premiership.